Seems like it works. That one on the Check. Check one, two. Sounds like it's working. Yep. All right. No? no. Okay. All right, where do you want it? Right where it is. Okay, let me get off the wire. I need that. Now. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna call the work zoning revision workshop dated um, March twenty first, twenty nineteen, eight twenty nineteen. Please rise. We'll pledge the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. Please be seated. As you're aware, this is zoning revision continuing. It's a workshop, so we take questions and comments and discussion from the audience. And at this point, I turn it over to Councilman Dean Michael, and he will conduct the business. All right, so I uh, gave everybody copies of the, uh, the previous minutes and the uh, revisions um, I saw that we had uh, two emails and Elliot informed me that there was a, a late, late minute uh, email uh, which he made a copy which I haven't read so uh, but I believe one of the emails was from uh, from Justin and since Justin you're here you might as well come up and read yeah. your, your I, I comments have, I have one comment before we start uh, Dean, I'd like it, if possible, when you show the revisions or changes made at the meeting, like tonight, yeah. that you do a red line and strike out. So we, when we compare what changed from the one that we started with, I can find it. Otherwise, I have to go through and try to find where the changes are because it's all black. I can't see what you changed. Well, um, I'm not an editor, so I don't, I've never done that. So uh, uh, it's also very difficult since uh, a lot of the documents we didn't get in Word. Uh, so I'm copying and pasting them out of the, uh, um, what, this whole thing? The PDF uh, file and yeah. having to reformat it. So uh, it would just be, make it easier to see. It may be easier for you to see. 
Well, some of them are not necessarily just changes. Some of them are just deleted. So it's if missing. we were, if we took it all out, it wouldn't be there uh, to begin with. So yeah. um, I, 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 I would say that if we're going to get more complicated, then we, we budgeted for a secretary, then we better bring on a secretary. Oh, okay. I'm trying I, to keep costs as low as possible. I, I understand. How do you? So you just go through the files and make the changes? Is that what you Yeah, mean? I go to the PDF. I, I, I copy the PDF. I put it onto a Word doc, and then I just edit from the Word doc. I mean, I can, I can make the changes with the way Ray yeah. suggests, but I have to know what they I mean, you'd have to tell me what they are. So if you were to <laughs> It's available in Word to do. I mean, No, no, I understand that, yeah, but I need, no. I need to... In other words, if you said to me, this is what you want to change, I can do it. Yeah, I mean, if we had the original Word docs, it may be easier. But the thing is, you know, I always found that when I was editing the, uh, some of the Word docs that I have, it would keep on crossing a line across the whole, yeah, the whole thing, yeah. and, and it wouldn't unformat. And if I hit accept, it would just wipe it all out. Or mm. Yeah, that's because you're working from, I think, because you're working from a PDF rather than the original Word files. Uh, yeah, can, but um, Maybe we can figure out a way to do that so it, that it shows up that way. I mean, I was just trying to make a final document right, because this right, is what we've right, decided the right, change right, should be. So right, right. Um, I, I know it's a little more work for everybody to cross-reference, but yeah. it, it, that's what we're really here is to make a final document. Okay. Well, maybe we, we can figure it. out a way of doing it. To, I'm not sure off the top of my head how we would, but... There should be a way. Ask me to do calculations on a spreadsheet. I have no problem. Yeah, no. <laughs> you want to do edits on a on a Word doc? It's, it's just not my. Uh, well, that's the, yeah, that's my forte. Part. Yeah, that's the easy part. <laughs> well, you're right. a publisher. You you, yeah, you edit those things. Right, but the question is how to get from point A to point B. That's right. what we need to figure out. Okay. All right. We'll work on that for next time. So, uh, Justin, if you want to come up and, and and read your comments, give you the opportunity. Well, then read what you want. <laughs> well, so I just so I moved up here. Um, sorry, Justin Carroll. I live at 160 Deer Ridge Drive. Uh, my husband and I moved up here in 2015 and have done some in intermittent Airbnb and VRBO over the years when we're not here. Um, we go on vacation. And so we have some experience with this. Um, but I, I was just reading through the provision and also kind of thinking with my legal hat on and not really taking a position on what we should be regulating or how to regulate it, but just kind of initial impressions I had from the law that I think the town should be aware of. I think the two big picture things um, were, one, generally that Airbnb is engaging in a lot of litigation against all the cities and towns who are trying to regulate this. And so I was just curious as if, if we had started with a town that maybe hadn't, um, uh, you know, had a lawsuit yet or had come to a settlement that we could kind of mimic to, to hopefully avoid that. Um, and then the, the second big uh, item I had was on the, the idea of an inspector and what I would argue is having someone from the town bless a rental property and are we opening ourselves up to liability when someone goes and rents something and says you know this was town of clinton approved mm -hmm. and a tree falls because it was diseased on the roof and someone gets injured or killed and now they're not just suing the homeowner and the homeowner's insurance policy maybe airbnb but the town of clinton as well because they send an inspector out and we're going to have a fight about did the inspector see this um, should they have seen it, um, you know, just kind of the, the way that litigation goes, right? You kind of sue everyone that you can. Um, and You think you know. it's better that they not be regulated? So, so well, so, so if the purpose is that we want to make sure that we've identified them and registered them and, and have emergency contact information, right? I think that you can do that. You can have people say, I want to rent on Airbnb. This is my name. This is my address. These are our emergency contact information. This is our occupancy, here's our rules, right? All the things you ask for in the law, but the town of Clinton is saying, right, we make no representation as to whether this is appropriate for, for rental, right? We are storing this information for our own safety and security purposes, but we're not going in there and saying you as a renter from California should rent this or you're gonna be safe there or it's not dangerous. Is that legally defensible? It, um, I, Rather than having somebody inspect it? Um, well, I think right right now, yeah. if something was to happen on my property, right, I think I and my homeowner's policy are going to be primarily liable, and Airbnb also provides 
uh, like a $1 million blanket policy per rental. Um, but I don't think the town right now has any liability with respect to my property unless there's been a complaint filed, right? If someone files a complaint that they see a dangerous condition on my property, then the town maybe has a, a, a duty to go investigate. Um, but this seemed to me that we're creating possibly creating that type of a liability that you might not want to create. And so right, you, if, it's okay if you want to create that, but just realize that it, you know, is a slippery slope. Uh, following up your point, uh, I've had several over the years uh, lawsuits against the town. The town necessarily was not the primary thing, but what they do is they take anybody close to it you know, if there's an accident on the road, it's a bright sunny day, no stones, no nothing, and they run into something, mm -hmm. it's the town's fault. And our insurance company fights them. Uh, I've had several of them, which I've been able to prove it wasn't within our jurisdiction and we got rid of it. So um, it doesn't mean we don't, ins you know, we didn't expect the road. The roads are what they are, you know, we maintain them and all. but. There's nobody out there running around doing a check every day and seeing what's happened. So uh, you're not going to mitigate lawsuits. They just come and do you and have go. lawsuits against on on per accidents on personal property right well, now. Well, not right now, but uh, like to me, this is ext you're extending your jurisdiction right from town property and roads into right my property, and so right that's okay. I, I just I think it should be a. I'm just saying decision. when lawsuits come involving anything the town automatically gets added just about and i know uh, i list the defendants and plain yeah, i know who yeah. gets sued so everybody but gets this there is, ma this is making you closer pockets. this so, is making you closer to yeah. the risk uh, yeah. in my opinion it's a, it's a point to inspect and have the attorney further verify yeah what the risk is or yeah. the insurance company but i'm just saying in general the town gets sued for everything so i mean we inspect like campgrounds and i would i would say it's kind of similar in a sense and and so that every year the campgrounds are recertified mm -hmm. um it doesn't necessarily put us really any in any obligation that the the campgrounds are operating as they're operating in good are they privately operated yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so um it's it's similar in, in that sense but you could almost draw the same conclusion with anything that we do when we give a building permit Exactly. Are we, are we yeah. issuing the building permit saying that the builder is of good risk? Yep. I mean, we're, we're not. We're just requiring that they have the right insurance, that they're following the right, uh, you know, schematics as to uh, um, building with two by sixes and, you know, doing R19 and, and all that other stuff. And, and so they're, they're just following to make sure that they set up the right parameters. But what they do beyond that, how can we be held high, you know, uh, liable? The bigger problem is that right now, Airbnbs, as per uh, conversations that I've had with the town attorney, is not legal in this town. So right now, everybody that has an Airbnb is operating illegally because um, it's, uh, it's Airbnb, different than B&B, are operated as a motel versus an Airbnb where the, t the the homeowner is living in the building and renting out a room has a separate uh, zoning. So the, the determination by our town council has been that Airbnbs are more similar to motels, hotels of operation. And therefore, since we don't allow it in our code, it's not allowed. Mm -hmm. So unless we write a code for it, they're not allowed. And that means, and Ellie heard a number of 80, I, the last time I looked was like two years ago, there was 15, maybe it's 30, I don't know. But whatever the number is, technically they're all operating illegally. Yep. So we can either bring them in, into compliance by making the law, or we can just go around and start fining everybody for having them. I mean, yep. I mean that's the two options here. Yep. Our, I think our issue though with the current law is that the current revision as it's written is, and you said it yourself, this, these are homes where somebody's living and renting out a room. And that's not necessarily. No, that's BNB. Airbnb is where they rent out the whole house, but or on a short period of time. That's the thing. Could be any. That's the could thing be about any. the current res uh, revision that I'm saying is, it could be several scenarios, and the current revision doesn't cover any of them. It could be somebody renting out their own home and they're never there. Well, well, we it could, could be somebody renting out a room. We could approach those things. That, 
you know, line by line, and that's fine. But I'm just saying yeah. that if, if we don't do anything about Airbnbs and RVOs and, and all the other names that we can give to it, technically they're illegal. Mm -hmm. So we either have to do something or we got to shut them down. Right. Uh, so just a, a couple other things just to, to flag on the, on the smaller points, but I know I didn't know what we're trying to get out of here if we're trying to regulate noise or traffic or safety or, or what the what the purpose was, but um, things like the, right, the occupancy and making it two people per per bedroom, right? I don't know if that's uh, a, you know a safety concern because we don't want bodies in a, in a house. Um, or, or, or what that is, but you know, I was thinking, right, if I have, um, you know, my house and then I've got a barn with a, a bed in it, right, or two beds in it and a bathroom, right, is that fit for two people or is that fit for four people? What if it's, you know, a thousand square feet or two thousand square feet and it's finished space? And, you know, I've seen some of the town regulations, some different towns that will regulate, you know, two people per bed plus two or you know i don't know just different versions of thinking about what a bedroom is right is it a finished basement is it an attic space that could be finished um you know but again i don't know if you want to you know limit the number of occupants or you want to kind of really accurately reflect how many people a house can sleep um, but just an alternate way of thinking about how to how to quantify the the people in there um and and the other the other kind of general point I had on, on, you know, the avoiding a fight with Airbnb is that is there a way to make the regulations fit the, the entire town or are they singling out renters, right? One version is occupancy, right? We're not going to say to somebody, you will have two bedroom house, you can never have more than four people sleep in this house and we're going to limit the number of kids that you have. Um, and so if there's a you know, a safety reason to do that, then I think that's a lot, you're, you're going to get out of a suit with Airbnb a lot easier. If you can say this is just, you know, a noise regulation that applies to everyone, you can't have loud music after whatever time at night. Um, but if we're saying that, you know, owners can play music until 3 a.m. and, you know, renters can't make a peep, right, are you setting yourself up for a lawsuit? And again, I don't know what we want to regulate, but just a way to, in my legal mind, of how to avoid those kind of fights from, from Airbnb. Um, have, do you know if any of these lawsuits have been resolved or they're all some are se some have settled I mean the bigger cities have settled with Airbnb I know Dutchess County settled with Airbnb to get um, Airbnb to collect the hotel tax directly um, but they haven't really been adjudicated they've been settled uh, yes yeah, so, I mean some of them are in the courts and some are settled yeah yeah, yeah. You know some of the things that uh, that you uh, you bring up. I mean, obviously, while we were in the committee, there had been some issues with some of the Airbnbs having rowdy, noisy occupants, mm -hmm. and, and so you know the I guess the um, the sanctity of the neighbor um, not having to deal with a different uh, or, or a, an absentee owner um, who's not regulating. You know that you can't go to and say that by having uh, the Airbnbs registered, then we'd also have a name of a contact and a yep. phone number, and and so that if there is a problem, we can identify it and and try to uh, alleviate those problems right away. Um, and then the other thing was uh, one of the things that we were talking in the committee was, you know, all properties are designed as far as the septic systems, because we have septics and wells, um, to have a certain amount of, you know, bedrooms and bathrooms that are supposed to al align with the size of the tank in the field. And if we're overloading the system by, you know, dumping a whole bunch of, let's say, weekend kids that uh, decide to have a, a party in a house, um, it wasn't really designed for that. So yeah. and, those, and those were some of the concerns that we were we were thinking about. And, and I think that's totally right. I mean, as a as a renter, right? I ha I was I don't know saying Elliot the planning board that we had someone request the house and say, you know, we're a very responsible group of eighteen year olds who want to rent a house for a weekend before you go up to college, and it's like delete immediately, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but there there is, you know. Uh, a system at least where when you go on Airbnb, right, you have a profile like a Facebook and you know how old the person is and they write a little blurb that says, I'm, I'm a, you know, grandparents, I've got three grown adult children, we're coming with our kids for the weekend. But depending on, right, if it's a, 
you know, someone like us who's here most of the time, but then maybe rents it one week, a year, or a month in the summer, right? That's one thing, but you can have a landlord, right? You see the absentee landlords who just have an investment property, never live there, and it just gets trashed, and they don't care what happens to the house. I think that can be a real problem. Um, but there's this whole spectrum, right, of like, I want to mm -hmm. do a couple days to go on vacation, or I want to rent it as, you know, every single day of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, having a contact information, right, I think is a great way to make sure that you have that for everyone. But um, you know, there's not, it's hard to find like a one size fits all solution. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you bring up a lot of good points that probably need to be addressed as we move along. Sure. And happy to. There's one interesting comment in here on the second page uh, where it opens up the possibilities. We talked about this at the last town board meeting and we will be talking about it again. The whole idea of how to handle conference centers. And if you look at where it says B, talks about when Justin has B6. Um, if a lot occupancies, for example, 10 people, a manager of Verizon wants to rent my house for a weekend to have essentially a corporate mm -hmm. get together, that really takes it out of the category of being an Airbnb and turns it into a conference center, which has a whole separate set of issues that go along with it. So I hadn't really thought about that angle. But I guess it's. it's I, I, it's I guess if that meets you the know. definition of what a conference center is, I don't think it does. But no, well, I mean, you know, retreat, conference uh -huh. center, different thing. Well, maybe. I mean, Can I guess the definition. That yeah, exactly. I mean, that's something that's going to have to. We'd have to nail it down. But I mean, you're, the, the distinctions are starting to get gray. Yeah, and, and these are all like categories. real scenarios that either like, we, mm -hmm. you know, right. we've had requests or people, you know, just over the years, I know that people have had, so I wasn't- I mean, making, for the most part, making up hard things. I don't think we've had many complaints no. No. for the number of Airbnbs, I'm, I'm sure that operate and the number of rooms that they probably rented out over the time. So it, it's usually never a problem until it's a problem. Right. Yeah. But then if we don't have a code, we can't enforce the law. Right. Yeah. So there's nothing we can do if there's no law to say you can't do this. Absolutely. Um, and having a complaint as a owner, right, means that your whole system has totally gone wrong and broken down. You probably have broken things in your house and damage, right? That's a nightmare scenario. You want to come home and see that they've, you know, made all the beds and washed all the dishes and put everything away, right? That's the ideal person. And most of the Airbnb and VRBO people do actually do that and take care of it like it's, it's their own home. But I think some of the full-time rental properties where it's, you know, obviously just wear and tear and more partying, that's where you can have some problems. Or shared services, a shared homes or apartments, you know, they have them down the Caribbean, they have them in France, and, you know, you go there for two weeks or three weeks and somebody else comes and... You travel more than I do. I don't know. I haven't been to these places. <laughs> no, I've never been in any of those. I've been in hostels, but not them. Timeshare. Timeshare, yeah, that's the word. Timeshare, yeah. Thanks, Justin. Sure. Thank you. Um, and if you just gave me another one that just came in that I didn't see, because it must have come after five. And and to be honest with you, oh, it says 4:49. But um, <laughs> if you're going to email me the day of, at least if you hit me in the morning, I I could probably get to it. Um, but if you're going to email me at five o'clock, I'm just not going to see it. So we can save it for next time. Um, it's all right. Well, I mean, it's it's of topic, so I don't want to. I mean the the 29 we can we can wait um, but you can make the uh, the one comment here is uh, from Marita Wells about 25015 on the Ridgeline oh. scenic protection overlay she's saying that uh, should maintain not shrink the 3,000 foot corridor and uh, B3 again the proposed revision weakens the restrictions on light pollution which harms both residents and animals proposed word should word should is ambiguous and is recommended that we use the shell instead instead um, and, and and I'll, I'll save 29 for when we get to 29 but um, the problem that I'm having is that I started looking and I gave you a copy of the uh, the map so if the two maps that we have in our zoning book talk about a corridor of 2,000 feet. So I tried to find, because it says it was amended in the local law uh, of 2,000, I had Carol 
thank you, Carol, uh, dig out the, uh, the local law of 2000, this whole section that was amended only dealt with communications, commercial communi non-commercial communication antennas and towers. That's the only thing that this law was, was dealing on. It's, I would have made a copy, but it's 40 pages, so I didn't want to make everybody a copy, but if someone wants to read it, you know, here it is. That was the only thing that it was, it was intended to do. So the 3,000 had to have changed either before this 2,000 revision, but our book uh, has this map of 2,000. So how can we have a map for 2,000, yet we're enforcing 3,000? So we either have to revise the, revise the, the map or revise the number. Um, and, and so I'm throwing it out there as to, uh, I know that uh, I was talking to Russ and uh, you know, he drove down the Deconic and I drove down the Deconic. I, I can't even see a thousand feet off the Deconic in either direction unless it's an open field. I mean, it's pretty wooded. So, yeah. so when was 250-15 written? Because you were saying 2000, that other law, but. 15's been around all right, and so that for longer than two thousand. So, all right, so that one originally has three thousand feet. So in 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 so it, it must have been prior to two thousand, yes. Yeah. But these maps are all dated. This one's March fifteenth, two thousand, but it shows only two thousand feet. Okay, but well, we've established that we don't have any official maps. Well, these but, are the official maps, and this <laughs> is the official law that was right. passed. So that one says three thousand. The, the, the law says 3,000, the maps say 2,000. Mm -hmm. So we have a contradiction that we either need to fix the maps or change the number. I would stay with the 2,000. But and and my, my opinion is that driving down the road, it's like I said, a mile wide I can't see 1,000 on both sides yeah. unless there's a field. The, the 3,000 uh, that's in this local law of 2,000 was all about commercial and non-commercial communications facilities. And it talks about the camouflage and everything else because it's within that ridge line. That was the whole premise of why this new lo local law was amending the two, uh, 250 15. Um, that was the only reason for it, was the communications towers. Does it specify 2,000 feet there? No, it says 3,000. But it's only talking yeah, about communications towers. It doesn't say anything other than that? No. Sure. Uh, Charlie Cannon, uh, Longview Road. Um, it'd be interesting to find out from state uh, DOT whether, you know, what sort of restrictions they have. I, I looked in every other town, Stanfordville, mm -hmm. Pleasant Valley, Myland, um, nobody else has this law. Yeah, you know, if you think nobody about else has a protection of, of the Taconic. I, I went into Code 360. Right. I, 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 I did a search for Taconic. That word does not come up anywhere in Code 360. You know, I looked it, in each of those right. towns. I put in Taconic. That word doesn't come up. I come in Ridgeline Protection. They don't even have that. So we're the only town that has this law. Well, your comment about how wooded it is speaks to, you know, if you think of the history of the Taconic, when it was built, Look, you know, like parcel access will show you what your parcel looked like in 1940 versus oh, yeah. now. Uh -huh. There weren't any trees in Dutchess County. I mean, Dutchess County was 15% forested in 1920. It's now almost 70% forested. So it was possible. In fact, that's what made the Taconic so priceless. People could come out of the city, drive up, pull off in the median, and have a picnic, right? It was. And it was the country, and you could see it, and, and you know it's grown in over time. So well, obviously, uh, you know the Deconic didn't go past '55 until after World War right. II. So yeah. so you know I think that there's some there's some history here, and why that was set so large. I agree with you that it's hard to see, even 500 feet away. Mm -hmm. um, what I wondered about doing this is how does somebody really know those? You know, I, I've looked at those maps in my zoning book for years and tried to figure out if I were a a property owner trying to figure out whether my parcel Property's was in, in that. I, you know, I do a lot of GIS. I've done work for the town on GIS. I don't actually know that anyone has a layer that shows the paved surface of the Taconic mm -hmm. to measure three, any. And they repave away. it all the time. And so we, you know, the town, the town, the county, they all have 
they know the uh, sort of the right of way and you know you, you can measure from that but i don't know it, it would be interesting to try to come up with an accurate map from the paved width you might want to think about a, an easier way to describe the parcel for instance the state i'm pretty certain owns fee title to the whole but they, they by own by deed by deed the so whole thing so that that like parcel like boundary is well defined like 125 and you can measure feet from there and like then that. anybody could go to parcel access and look at it and say you know because you can measure distance on parcel access they could find out if their parcels within that right now it's really hard with that map for anybody to sort of stare at it and think well you know so th there is some history for that reason behind that distance but but we're the only town that's yeah. I mean I when I was searching I was looking for what other towns have done and you know trying to piggyback off of what they said and and when I saw the map saying 2,000 and I saw the, the code saying 3,000 I'm like well that's a problem because it doesn't match and then I tried to look at the other towns and they don't have anything I'd be willing to bet it's a typo on the map <laughs> uh, the law says 3,000, and you know, on the zoning board, we would have to follow what's written here, not what. Well, it, it's yeah. not a typo in the sense that they actually shaded in 2,000 feet from. Well, how do you, how do we know that though? I how mean, do, yeah, how do you know that? Do you have a scale? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah we there's don't a know scale that. right on here, one to well, six uh, sixty. <laughs> one inch is 5,000 feet. <laughs> All so, right. So it, it was scaled. Um, so I'm thinking that it's more of a mistake of the, the 3,000 than the 2,000. But I think even going back to 2,000 is, is more than sufficient for the fact that it's pretty wooded. I don't think yeah. we could see beyond 1,000 feet from the parkway. Yeah, I agree. Russ yeah. Tompkins, Schultzville. I, I'm in agreement with what Dean is saying. It, you know, you're using this thing and saying 3,000. It's 6,000 feet because it's 3,000 each way. 6,000 yeah. feet is over a mile wide. Now, from my house to the town hall is roughly a quarter of a mile. And multiply that by four times. I mean, you're going to be going up. Slate up, quarry. Up, up to Slate Quarry, yeah. You know, at least at a goat farm. And, and there's, I can't think of any place along the parkway that you might be able to see that far. Possibly before you get this open turnpike where the orchard's on a hill. But I bet you 3,000 feet is even past the crest of that hill. So uh, I think you should take the map at 2,000. Matter of fact, I think you should eliminate this completely. But I think that 500 feet from each side of the parkway would be more than adequate. So that you had 1,000 feet plus the width of the two lanes plus the median. And just to correct you, they didn't used to pull off into the median because I was a trooper for 21 years, and you could not park and pull into the median. <laughs> It, years ago, before people became so concerned about everything, we had beautiful pull-offs on a parkway. Mm -hmm. And you had all these places where you could pull off and have a picnic lunch. Well, the parkway closed them up because all the people that came up on Friday night dropped all their garbage off on Sunday night. And they had to go out every Sunday and pick up all this garbage, and they don't have a dump of their own, the, the highway department. So thanks to our environmentally conscious people of this society, they had to close all those, but they were all the way up and down the parkway. Now there's very few, there's one up in, by Lake Taconic, you know, but it's a shame. They were all the way down. My relatives lived in Austin, and you could go down even on the, the narrow part below 84. There was a pull-off, mm -hmm. you know. Socially conscious people or non-socially conscious people destroyed it. So I think you should go 500 feet on each side. This gentleman's comments about, since we're kind of out of order, this gentleman's comments about the uh, Airbnbs and stuff, I think he had some very, very good comments. And I've got to find. Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> That's 250 29 1. And uh, since he already addressed that, I'm going to address it too at the same time. Uh, 250.29.1. Next one. Well, why don't, you, why don't you wait until we get there? Well, it sounded like you already were there. Well, he, he wrote a letter, and he, okay. since he's here, I let him come. But I, I also have more comments from Marita Wells All right. on that right. section. So anyway, I not to go out of order. Let's think he has go one very section good at a time. So 
So I, I, I would make a motion to uh, amend to the 2000 just to comply with the map, and I think it's more than reasonable. Oh, I'll second. Mm -hmm. Can we have discussion? We got, now we have discussion. Mm -hmm. we, we did the motion, we second, now we can have a discussion. Okay. I don't, I don't understand why this is becoming such an issue. I mean, this is just to define a corridor. It doesn't mean that there can be no construction. It just means that we want to take special care of this corridor and that we want it to be reviewed by the planning board. That's, that's all it is. And I, you know, if it's wooded now, but we only have a 500 foot buffer, it would be very easy for something to be built at 600 feet that is totally visible and that would be unregulated according to our Ridgeline Scenic and Historic Protection Overlay. It's not that we're saying there can be nothing. As a matter of fact, um, I was riding with a person who's a member of this board and we were looking and I said, well, look, there's, there's construction within, within view of the Taconic and he said, yes, that, that's, totally, that's totally allowed. It's just that we want to make sure that we have some, some control over how it, is, how it is done. It's not that it's saying that it's going to be forever wooded or it's going to be forever untouched. And, and, and the point that I started with was that I drove up to Deconic and you really can't even see 500 feet. 2,000 foot buffer on both sides, as Russ was saying, is, is three quarters of a mile. I don't think you're going to see three quarters of a mile. I, I think we have down. enough protection at 2,000. And more to the point, I think the more regulations we have, the planning and zoning board is going to get so busy with with all the applications that they're going to have to view. I think we, we should make it simpler for the zoning and planning, not more complex. Um, and, and that's more to the reason why I think we should reduce it, because I think it's reasonable, number one, and number two, I, I just don't th think we can see it. I mean, it's just it, it's just adding a layer of work. And the more layers of, of government that we add in, the more these co these projects cost. Um, it's just it, it's unfair to anybody that wants to build anything in this town, even if they're being responsible. They're having all this extra cost. I just I just don't think it's fair. And the town incurs costs for the zoning enforcement officer to go out and verify right what. Distance it's going to be a cost that. of the town, cost of the, yeah, the so landowner, cost to everybody. So, I, I think 2,000 is more than reasonable, and it it will then match the map without having to well, go to the I expense mean, I think of getting it's a map. It's easy to change a map. I, I think that's a. I, I think we're making a, a lot of fuss over, a, um, you know, words on on the map. What we're really talking about is how can we have good control over what is built within the viewshed of the Taconic. The Taconic is one of our town's National Register listings. We have five properties on the National Register of Historic Places. That's one of them. Therefore, we need to define it within our historic protection overlay. And I would think we wouldn't want to reduce the protection that is here, but maintain what has been recommended. I mean, you talk about view shed. I mean, what is a view shed? Um, you know, and I, and I saw I think it was the email that uh, maybe uh, someone, I, I read something. Anyway, it talks about line of sight. I mean, so we could define that if you can't see it from the Deconic, you can do it because it's not within the view. I mean, it, it's, yes. you know, what is, what is a view shed? And, you, and well, that's where I think we're- a few years ago when there was a proposal for another cell tower mm -hmm. and the planning board asked the company that was planning to put that cell tower up to raise a balloon so that we could- Yeah, we were on uh, yeah. German Road. Yeah, and, and that, that, you know, when people started to see that from mm -hmm. the Taconic, that was a, an argument against- there's a, there's a balance of people that think that we should have more cell towers because we have no cell service and if it's there's an emergency, you know. Well, it doesn't have to be, I'm, I'm just trying to suggest- I know. Argue that this is a historic and scenic overlay district. It's not- it's not for everywhere, but it is just asking that we have a, a, the best amount of protection that we can for our special places. Hmm. You can overturn it because that's your right, but it is, you know, it is specified in here in the law as 3,000. And why would we want at this stage of the game 
to lessen that when in fact um, you know development could be coming up here at any time that's going to begin to um, interrupt that that particular view shed from one of our most historic places thank you in, in terms of the planning board and the ZBA I don't see that there's any well, I'm just saying not only this but everything that we're doing here we, I mean every every section we're we're adding on another layer that is adding well, more to their plate some sections we're making less burdensome I want to point so out too a, we're not adding anything it's because it's currently at 3,000 and well and, and the map contradicts it that's Mr. Canham told us already that they go by the words on the page not the right. map so we're not adding anything I mean in, in all the years on the plant that I was on the planning board but I, I just think the 3,000 is over restricted to begin yeah. with so I mean, well, that's I mean that's why I would change it yeah. anyway and, and the committee note said so that 3,000 was too big on the bottom right. page note two right so there wasn't agreement even on the committee no so not at all so you know I think two is is well reasonable I mean it's practically a mile wide and that's a wild thing I mean you can go to the extent saying you can't do anything in town everything's historic and <laughs> clean I mean you can go We're that not. far well, I think you're taking it to a little I bit of an extreme. I'm trying to make an extreme. I understand, okay. but I'm just saying right. we can well, keep opening. Well, then we don't up. have to have all these meetings. That's right. We can just say that and go home. Right. And we're done. And and nobody can come into town, and so we don't we, build any more so houses. So what have we been doing for the past four years? <laughs> well, <laughs> five Charlie, years again, Charlie Canham. Just tonight. One more comment. In in ten years on plus years on the zoning board of appeals, I have never exactly. we, we have never had. Right. An issue come up within the 3,000 right. foot. It has not been an issue at all. I, we, right. we haven't had a single variance application. Well, we haven't had building in the last 10 years, really. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, because I mean, I remember uh, hearing about planning board meetings going p past 12 o'clock at but night. It wasn't yeah. be, but it wasn't because of this. Well, I'm just saying we haven't had construction in the last 10 years, so that's well, that's part of the reason why you probably I mean, haven't I, come I, up. I attended a lot of those meetings in, in my early days yeah. on the planning board, right. and in the 12 years afterward, and this was never an issue. Yeah. And, and, and just to point out that that the the regrowth that has occurred within the bounds of this is not irreversible, right? So there's there's nothing to say that clearing couldn't happen. So that so that while you may not be able to see more than 500 feet or even 2,000 feet away, that's not to say that that's you know right. part of the restrictions in here are on clearing and you know changing that view shed. So it's again, it's still giving it a 2,000 foot buffer. I think that's still yeah. yeah I I I just wanted to point out that. You know, it, it is. You're, I agree with. This has not been a very active building phase for the last ten years. But you know, there's not a lot of activity within that corridor. Mm -hmm. So, motion second. Uh, before we vote, so are we keeping then the wording as well for three th or two thousand, whatever it is, feet of. I've only suggested changing the 2,000. Surface. I know. Outside paved surface. The wording would stay the same. Wording so stays the, the same. It's just the numbers changing. Staying right. the same. Okay. So that's uh, 25015B number two. two. Number two. Are we going to vote? Elliot? No. I no. Yes. 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 I want to make sure as well uh, in this same section. Sorry, I'm trying to find it again. We had an email. I may have to come back. You have to change it two places there. Below you have to change it regarding the map. Immediately below the 3,000. Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to be rude. Yeah. The second line. The second line. The second line of that yeah. paragraph. The, yeah. The same word shows. The, the three thousand shows up twice. Yeah. Okay. One's numbers and one's words. Yeah. <coughs> what are you looking for? Where we did the thing about single-family homes. The wording wasn't changed everywhere. I'll find it. So, anything more on? 
the other 15 or 15.1. If not, we'll go to 15.2, which is the old B. I'm sorry? What? The email that unfortunately I only got out at 611 because oh well i was i was gone out of the office but trying to make that, copies isn't here. that what elliot was copying you didn't copy my email uh, or what do you copy <laughs> you could talk to him later about that because you're here <laughs> you're here so you okay. can speak okay i have i, was I oh i apologize for the lateness but um you know the the, the minutes and the revised text mm -hmm. was not available until late last night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I was busy all day today so I came home and started looking at it when I got home at about 4 30 and I have some comments that okay. I that I sent around and I guess I'll just go over them if you don't mind sure um, some of them are, I think are just very simple like under this is section 250-15 and under C applicability um, I think the word, we, I think we intended to take out the word single family residences in line three right. and to start that sentence with agricultural uses. Mm -hmm. But it, it was not changed in the, no, in sure. the revised text. I think I only took it out of where mm -hmm. it ended a sentence. I didn't take it out where it started. Yeah, and then in the new version it did. Yeah. That's right. It's hard to see what So that should be out? Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Yeah, we had cut it, but it didn't make it to the okay. change that we got. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I took it off of where purpose was. That's the okay. only only spot where we talked about cutting it out. Okay. But it also. I think we did. I have it crossed out in mind from. So the last yeah, I do. So do I. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So I'll get that. Okay, and then uh, another. Um, I think these are really very simple things under um, general provisions number one sequa. Mm -hmm. um, I think you probably meant to keep the words Ridgeline Scenic and Historic Protection over in there, and it's just come, it reads now within the Protection Overlay Districts. So I think you. No, it says, it says Ridgeline Scenic and Historic Protection Overlay District. In the revised. The oh, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the Got revised. It. Okay. I mean, this is that problem of going back and forth between the revised oh, and the. Okay, all right. Um, I'm looking at the wrong and one. the <coughs> original. Okay. Yes, yeah, this is the new one. This is okay. All right. Yeah, was, I'm sure that was just a mistake. Oh. Okay. And then under two design line two, which is on the next page. I think here you want single family to be added back in. So this reads as stipulated in section 25096 of this chapter the planning board approval shall be required for the design of i think single family needs to be added in as well as two family multi-family residential structures right i had it marked out you know we, we crossed it out at one point Under design, I have it circled and X'd in my uh, my notes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we started at the beginning by putting sing single family back in. Or it does not exclude single family. Therefore, it would yeah. apply to it. Remember, to be consistent with what is under purpose and applicability, it needs to be here. Single family was deleted under purpose. No. No, and then we added it back in in the last oh. meeting. So when we get to oh. this section, it should stay in under design because we decided to keep single family uh, included in this. Well, I have it 
crossed out. So are we adding it back in or are we? Uh, I think to make it consistent with the rest of it, it should, should be there, right? It should be consistent yeah. with the rest. Well, yeah. we, we were deleting it in all we, places. No, we added it back in in all places. It was deleted oh. originally and then we added it back yeah. in. I, yeah, we did. I didn't read the minutes of this thing, so I don't know. So then it should go back in in that case. And the next one's lighting, right? Lighting, yeah. Um, so this is okay. Got that. Lighting, I remember we had quite a discussion about lighting and it was, we were told that everything that was in this section was actually covered in the special section 250-61A, which is on lighting. So I quickly, I mean, I, I didn't really have time, but I, I went and I, I printed it out and I read section 250-61A, and I found discrepancies between what was spelled out here for again our special protected areas and what is um, covered there for general residential use and others and, One and, that and I, I believe ray said something about when we get to that section he's going to have comments about what we deleted because <laughs> i remember it was a conversation and mm -hmm. there was an argument of of sorts that says they didn't want to take it out we did take it out we agreed that we did take it out and we we're going to address it when we get to 61. Okay, so it is going to be addressed. I mean, because yeah, that, that's my there. suggestion. We just haven't gotten we, there yet. That we, that we hold this language and remember this language. Mm -hmm. And my suggestion is that we even import that language. Well, it was, it was agreed to take it out here, so it'll probably get somehow modified there as well. So I'm, I'm sure. Well, but it's, we're going to have to get it in there because when we, we may forget a year from now, when we finally get to section 69A, that- I'm making a note there for myself. But this has to be, you know, this has to be put back in, and we can then decimate it if we want to, but it needs to be there. And we, because we're not on lighting, but I can't bear, I mean, one thing that I noticed as I started to read lighting, and this is just an aside, Nowhere do we talk about light that goes up to the heavens. All of our lighting is based on what's going to our neighbors and our, and our ambient light levels on our own properties. But I thought the whole problem with light pollution was what's going up into the heavens and not a... So anyway, that's, that's just a thought. So again, I apologize for late submission, but you know, to the earlier discussion about actually alleviating some of the burden of the administrative burden on this, I think it would be useful to have a secretary to, to actually work on this and be taking this down and, and, um, and getting it into a, you know, a Word document that shows the changes. Um, so there's, that's my, my two cents worth it. And getting it out in a timely manner so we're, you know, this way we're, you know, we're going back and back and back. And, and plus we said we had a rule that, and that's the reason I rushed to do this, because our, our rule is that if someone gets comments in before the meeting starts, they can be discussed. Otherwise, our rule says they gotta wait till the very end of the whole process. So if we can't do it, you know, I mean, we really got I'm not precluding you from bringing the information in, so it's, yeah, it's just. Yeah, I know, but why don't we, you know, why don't we pay a secretary? Because I think this is hard for you. It's obviously. gonna get. And, if it's going to get more complicated, we're going to have to. And it's getting hard for all of us to try to make the um, comparisons page to page. Nope. So anyway. Just trying to save money for the town. Yeah. You know, I spoke to Elliot today on the phone because he was helping me look up something. I'm not a computer person. And I said that... Everybody comes here and wants to do what's best for the town, but unfortunately, all of our opinions aren't the same. <clears throat> and since Ms. Cook brought this up, I'm gonna come back to 215. But I have a couple comments. You know, I've been told all along that we had to have this comprehensive plan, we had to follow it all. And, and in the comprehensive plan, it says you should review it 10 years. 
The comprehensive plan is dated 2012. According to page five of the summary re recommendations, a review should be undertaken at least every 10 years <coughs> with community surveys. Okay. Now, there was some for the original comprehensive plan, but now, why do we start a zoning revision four years Four years ago, you started the drawing revision. So that takes you back to roughly to 2014, two years after the comprehensive plan. That isn't 10 years. Second thing, it says the recommendation <coughs> for the comprehensive plan states the plan is a legal prerequisite to zoning authorized by Section 272A of the New York State Town Law. Not true at all. I looked up the town law. In fact, the town law 272A states in Section 1H, quote, it is the intent of the legislature to encourage, and I underline, but not to require the preparation and adoption of a comprehensive plan. There is no legal requirement that have a comprehensive plan at all. And that it doesn't, and it goes on to say, it doesn't affect existing master plan or land use plans, which is zoning. So you didn't need this comprehensive plan to begin with. It's in place, so it's, we're stuck with it. But there's mis misinformation been given out. Now, going back to 250.15. Can I comment on that real quick? Um, I'm going to send an email around to all of you and to you tonight, Russ. There's a, there's a document on the um, Department of State website for New York State that explains how zoning enabling laws work and what the comprehensive plan um, role in that is. Once and you it have it, then you're says, kind of stuck with it. It but clearly it says that, it, that zoning it. laws are... Uh, must be based on a comprehensive right. plan. It doesn't have to be a, a written down comprehensive plan like we did, but their town has to have some sort of what they Document. describe as a comprehensive plan. Well, if you look at 272A, and I quoted it, not, it is the intent of the legislature to encourage, but not to require the preparation and adoption of a comprehensive plan. And then they go on to say that it does not affect existing master plan and existing comprehensive plans or land use plans. Okay. Okay. Now, on 250.15, I'm I'm amazed, and I'm sure Ms. Cook believes that she's right, but I'm amazed at 250.15 that you saw fit to remove three indications that said this was not to apply to single family. And the red that was in there with single family was put in, but inadvertently not taken out because on footnote one, they said a majority of the members believe the many zone as recommended to be unduly burdensome. So that red was amended. So you crossed out single family up here. You crossed it out in s s paragraph C. Then you crossed out the single family in two other places, going against three places here that said it should not apply. And I'm, I'm amazed that, you know, you people voted against it. You did it. It's too late, apparently. But I just figured I'd bring that up. Now, she was just talking about 25015 dot oh it's two fifty fifteen. I don't think we've got to two fifty dot fifteen yet, which was fifteen B, have we? No, no we haven't gotten no. to B. Okay. Just a um, one perhaps unexpected consequence of adding single family. One of the reasons we haven't had cases before the ZBA about the fell of this is most of our cases were single family residence mm -hmm. variances and, they, and we could happily ignore the three very detailed pages. And uh, we're always looking for simple prices right. for a variance. Um, I'm concerned about section D1, which would, so uh, I just checked, used parcel access on my phone and even at 2,000 feet, almost all of my neighbors are in the, at 2,000 feet, our house no longer is, but pretty much everybody else. So in you're saying thank you? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so, so, um, but, but if you read D1, uh, uh, section 215 D1 about Secra, yeah, this means that if someone wants to put a garden shed within the setback, and and many of those properties are narrow, they're they're pre pre-existing non-conforming lots. They would have to treat that as a type one action under Secra and do a full impact. That's what I'm saying. These laws so, are so, going to push more burden on you guys. Right. But and, um, so and I think you could you could amend the part about the Secra to be there. Certainly will be actions before the town for which you would want a full Secra review. But 
The way it's written, anything that requires a variance from the regulations in this chapter shall mm -hmm. be a type one action is really broad. It would apply to literally putting a garden shed in the setback. Or doghouse. Um, and if there's a way to craft that a little more narrowly so that it applies to the ones that we really care about and not forces some suggestion. Uh, I, um, I'd have to, I have to work on it. It just sort of struck me when I read that. And, you know, as I've said, we've been able to sort of gleefully, we just haven't had to deal with the language in this much. And so I, um, yeah, I, I'm, someone ought to think about how to do that. Otherwise, we can go back to not including single families as no, Russ I'm, has been I'm, concerned. I, I, and I don't object to that at all. I'm just saying that one unintended consequence of a previous, you know, when this was only for commercial activity, that made perfect sense. Yeah. But now that you're including single family homes, it would be nice to come up with a way to exempt minor, you know, let me think about some language. If someone else has a faster mind, they can think about it. This is the part under general provisions you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. under general provisions one, secret. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, the type, a type one secret is not unduly onerous, but it's a lot, it is more paperwork. Is that is in my? Uh, Rich Morse, uh, but isn't there a requirement of a square footage for a house? And couldn't there be a different classification for construction of a lesser square footage? I mean, maybe that could be the criteria. Yeah, yeah. Or it's like called chattel property. Or, or, type of thing, yeah. Or if it was just an accessory structure, so a, exempt an accessory structure yeah. on a single family residence, right? That would, that, that's 90% of the variances we get, and a lot of the work of the planning board is related to that kind of, and, and I hardly see the need for a secret review for a, a garden shed. So if we just added a sentence at the end that said something like accessory structures on a single family lot would be exempted? I got to read definition of accessory structures to be sure that it well yeah, if you add accessory structure it could be a an apartment that's a dwelling yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, accessory that's dwelling a dwelling yeah. is completely different from accessory structure at least we will yeah have okay yeah. yeah there's two so sets of words here yeah cuz you get into dog houses and stuff like that Uh, anybody want to propose a change? Why don't we work on it and put it in next time? All right. Take so it. email me. Yeah. I'll, I'll put it in, and if we all agree, we'll keep it. Yeah. Okay. So it's 250, 15. D1. What was it? D1. D1. Okay. All right. Any more questions or comments on 15? 15 one going once going twice 15 old B now number two uh, it would basically follow point one wouldn't it yeah, much similar. of the wording they're very similar I just think it'd be simple if I just had a nameplate brought up here and I could just hold it up like this. <laughs> but people are going to get to know me, whether it's for the good or bad. 250, 15-2, formerly B, under C2. Same thing we brought up in 15-1. Yeah. Development of land in the AR15 district, and we added, and in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District, should be provided, but not all the land is going to be in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District. So, if you remember in 15.1, oh, wait a minute, I'm on the wrong we page. We changed the wording. I'm on the wrong that. page. It's 15.2 C2. Mm -hmm. I'm saying we should add the same wordage there that you did in the previous section. Development land in the AR3 District, which is in the Aquifer Protection Overlay District, should be subject to. Again, aquifer protection overlay. Same wording there. Because I'm saying it's not all in it. Right. Okay. I actually had an error on the page because yeah. we yeah. made that comment the last time. So same wording. Yeah. And on C five, I feel the same thing here that we deleted the last sentence in the previous section, 
where we deleted suitable storage facilities yep. and just said, okay, it will not allow it to seep in the surface water or groundwater. Yeah. I don't think that you need that last sentence in there either. Yeah. Yep. And believe it or not, that's the only two things I have to say about that one. <laughs> Anyone else? Right? Did you have anything? Well, he, he covered the one I was talking about. Now, and, and this, this pops up several places, not necessarily only here, but in some of the subsequent ones. It says that, doesn't say anything about grandfathering. So if you have something in existence that doesn't meet the new requirements, it said you have to come into conformance. This could mean ripping barns down, houses, driveways, I don't know, whatever it is. Uh, I'm concerned about that as being very onerous on somebody that has a nice house that doesn't comply with some of these rules. Mm -hmm. and, and but there would have to be a change, so what would be the change well, that, you should, saying, that you wouldn't have to comply? Grandfathering does not appear any place in here. So uh, it's a thought that Pops sure. up, and I, I see it. In I mean, how do you how do you want to address it? I mean, that would be I mean, you would put something like that. You would put in the very front, Wh whatever general provisions or something, yeah. and you'd have to come up with wording to simply say that because I I know I, some of the other yeah. stuff later on I read where it says if you and are not in compliance with right, something, right. And we can add a number six right at the end and compliance. say. Well, no, because then you have to add it each time. You're better yeah. off just putting it in front so of two fifty. No, at the very very front of the book. Oh. In the, in the, uh, I don't have the, 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 the book in front of me, but I suspect at the very front yeah. there's some sort of general information. Or yeah. it seems to me that's where it ought to go because it applies to everything. Yeah. yeah. Rather than having to repeat it over and over and over again, yeah. there must be a place in the front where we can put it. General purpose? You know, or something, yeah, yeah. As, a, as a general <laughs> statement. That, you know, when we can come up with wording without I mean, I'm trying And to then you can problem. put a definition of what grandfathering means, you know, that it, occurred, it the adoption allows of things law that have something. been put in place. There may even be something there. Prior to uh, the adoption of the law. Yeah, exactly. You say it at the beginning and it's done. And then it covers. And then you put a definition of it so yeah. everybody understands. So, what so it's Ray, um, if you want, it, it would be, I guess, 250-1 which we didn't change, but if you want to think about what we could put in there. You should probably add something there. And you, you can add it. You might also consider 25018 oh, existing lots of records. That, probably, that grandfathers them in. Yeah. You might put 25018-1 yeah. saying previous structures that are, are in existence at the date of this law are not you know, doing it. That's what we're going to do at the beginning. Yeah. Well, like I said, you got two fifty eighteen existing lots. Yeah, so have it I right. thought you could put two, add eighteen B and say structures. You know, but irregardless, wherever you put it, I think it's important that it be put in so that what you've got is is safe. Yeah. yeah. What does it say? Two fifty eighty. Is that? Yeah. Does it cover that? Non-conforming uses, any lawful non-conforming use of a building or land in existence on the effective date of this chapter except as disallowed by 250 section 80 uh, may be continued indefinitely if maintained in accordance with applicable codes, laws, regulations, uh, but A shall not enlarge, extend, or place on a different portion of the lot, parcel of land. Uh, it shall not be moved to another location. That's B. C shall not change to another non-conforming use. D shall not be reestablished. And E shall be subject to all administrative and enforcement provisions. That, you're reading 81, right? Um, the previous one. Oh, I started with 80 and I went over to 81, sorry. So only 80 has the lawful use of land intent of this article is to limit but not increase non-conforming uses. Well, Ray, is that sufficient? 250-80? I don't know. Page. I didn't read it. Right yeah. I mean, the whole Article uh, 6 is non-conforming uses and structures, so. 
that's probably where it should be addressed. But if you're not changing anything, then it wouldn't really be a factor of needing to be grandfathered. I think the only thing that we're going to have to protect by what you're thinking, Ray, and well, no, correct there me are, if I'm there, wrong, there is some like, words in the stuff that we're going to talk later tonight that actually says yeah. you have to bring it into conformance. Right. And but that's, I think that's only if you make a change. No, it says existing. Okay. Yeah. Where are you from? Well, I don't know where you're from. It's right. in stuff we're going to talk to okay, later. Well, we'll okay, well, we'll look at it. All right. But I, I'm just saying okay. that. And well, the other maybe. reason is that in the past, we do allow, and I don't think it's changed in the zoning, that if you wanted to replace your mobile home, and there are about 10 of them in town, they're all documented, we know where they are, you can have a 50% increase in the size of the footprint of the mobile home. Or if the mobile home burns, you can replace it, you know, that, that kind of thing. So that's an unconforming use, and it's an adding on to the space. But you don't go to the planning board and get approval for it. Right. You just ask the ZEO. Yeah, but to, we're not in that section. So no, no, but I'm, I'm just I, I understand trying there's, to uh, there's like give the, an example. A lot of places don't allow it, um, and, and we, we can get to that section and talk about it. But... Uh, you know, so like in the um, well, just, like in the city of Poughkeepsie where they have attached houses, they've made a determination they're not going to have attached houses anymore. So if the if the property is damaged beyond a certain percent, and I don't want to quote it, um, you would not be allowed to rebuild. Uh, and and I know this because of insurance wise, um, we won't insure it either because you're not allowed to rebuild. So it's it's a problem that yeah. way. I was just using that as an example yeah. of a situation that could get hung up on this. So unless we're going to add it here, let's skip over it for now and address it in the proper section where it should be. Okay, let me go back here. So we're doing point three, oh, right? Yeah. No. Where are we? We're still yeah. on um, point B. two, unless you want to go. Oh, okay. B. Yeah, I was okay there. Talk grandfathering and yeah. then. He got my annual the right. manure stuff taken care of. Old C, now number three. Yeah. And it's the same thing, D3, with the same wording as the previous sections? Well, no. Actually. All right. No, it's not. It's different. No. Um, uh, my comment in B, where it says floodplain district. It's, it's different, isn't it? No, it's the same word. I guess you're right. Yeah. That was added. Was uh, it says maps as 100-year floodplains. I've been trying to find right. out yeah. the current floodplain maps. Are they 100 or 500 years? I, I haven't got a definition of which one they are. I know they changed them about. <coughs> 10 there years are 100s ago. and there are 500s. And even if you look on the county, you'll see different shading of blue. Well, yeah, I know. As to which category it is okay so it is there are the 100 is good okay i wasn't sure if they only had one anymore i just knew they changed the maps and then i had grandfather no, came up here this is which one floodplain okay where is this issue you have about conformity right concern you have um, can you point it out to me that's what I'm looking for I don't see it well the the animal waste thing we right yeah get re right change okay and at the, well, at the top of the page the word before is missing again here what on the, the floodplain number three yeah d3 uh, four rather d4 application blah 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 right. before the approving agency And then you want to change D3 so that the wording matches the others? And D3. Yeah, it's going to match the previous sections that were changed. Yeah. Within the. But I don't see this issue that Ray is con well, it, it's concerned not, about. Well, it's not on this. 
So it's, it's not okay. something on one of these that we were reading. All right. After a while, it becomes a blur reading all these okay. things. Okay, well, if you can find it again, and we should yeah. see. And Dean, just real quick, number seven, we'll cut that last sentence again. Yeah. About At the very end. Yeah. Yeah. Could we possibly get a copy of these maps here in the building so that we could take a look at them before a meeting and see where they apply and how they apply? So um, I, I didn't check to see if or where, or where the can maps we see were them? added to. I thought they were going on. The comprehensive plan has the maps, and they were supposed to also be tagged into. Uh, oh, on the website. On they, the website. They weren't. I checked they were. it. I don't think they no, were. I, I couldn't didn't get find it. them. All right, so I'll, I'll have. Uh, if, if they're on the if website, you, that's okay. If you but search out the comprehensive plan, you can see it, but I'll have it re tagged so that it'll be Thank you. with the revision, too. Yeah, they are on the website. There's, there's separate links for the maps, right? Yeah, but what he's saying is we can put a link in the zoning revision yeah, section right. on the website so we can just, you can look at it and go right to it. Got it. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's, it's in six is where some of that appears, what I was talking about. It says, all uses in the F district shall comply with the provisions of this chapter, including but not limited to. And then it has general performance standards, landscaping, lighting, mm -hmm. goes down the whole list. Yeah. So in other words, if you didn't comply with them when it was all done and existing, oh. it says you got to do a compliance. Some of them may be easy, some of them may be hard. I don't know, in the floodplain. That's where the grandfathering would, you know, whatever it is, it is. Okay. That's, that's one of the grandfathering reasons so you want to add something well, in we there can, we can qualify that yeah, it, yeah. It, it's not I'm not saying it, new stuff right I'm just saying the old okay. stuff so we need to do what is that 250 80 15 so uh, should we put all new uses three. Yeah. you just yeah. put the word new in there yeah six yeah Five, put new new, new uses yeah yeah new uses. makes it simple yeah. You know, an easy one. Okay. New I love it. Good. <laughs> That's all I had. Okay. I was hoping we could make it more complicated. <laughs> oh, so you could do red lines and yeah, strikeouts? Yeah. Just for simple people like me, D2, the minimum lot area for a proposed lot within the F district shall be set forth in attachment two. I have attachment two in front of me. And all the way across it, you got a dash, which more or less, I guess, means it doesn't apply. So it can't, it, it can't be as set forth if it doesn't apply. And there are several uses in that F district. You, you have, if you go down it, you have uh, agricultural, animal husbandry. There, there are several permitted. And obviously, they're not all going to be the same, but I mean, it's, I read the dash meaning that you can't, but on a schedule of use regulations, there's several permitted. So I, I, I'm a little confused as the minimum lot area, and there's no minimum lot area showed. So I'm, you're going to have to help me along there. Well, the lot area is in 19. What, what do you mean by 19? Or? Well, it says subject to the minimum lot area requirements of 2019 of this chapter. Hmm. Well, I would think, the, the, but it does say attachment two and subject yeah. to the minimum lot area. Well, the lot, lot area. area is based on the 2019. Uh, the allowable uses are in attachment two. Okay. No, it's but 2519. No, he's talking about the area and bulk regulations, not oh. the schedule of uses. Yeah. Attachment two is area and bulk, which just lists the uh, setback requirements and minimum lot size. And and 25019 talks about minimum lot size per dwelling unit. But it doesn't mention anything. And there's no about dwelling unit allowed in the floodplain. But it doesn't say anything well, about the F district. Yeah. So there's, there are uses, overlay, isn't it? but it says that the minimum lot should be as set forth in attachment two. Floodplains and, and overlay. Dashes. So that's why there's no. Yeah, it sounds like it means not applicable. It's because the floodplain is an overlay, so it's whatever district you're in. In that's the right. floodplain. In the yeah. floodplain. Yeah. So the floodplain, you could be an AR5 or an AR3. Um, okay, well, that kind of makes sense. 
I hate to agree with you on something. I'm but, sorry. Yeah. I try not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Work but, harder. I mean, I, I think that it's misleading. If it, you, I, I agree. If you didn't know that, yeah, it's maybe, maybe it should say somewhere is under F as so, per uh, area which that floodplain is in. You know, if there's no minimum lot re size requirements for the floodplain, then that whole number two is moot, right? Minimum lot area for any proposed lot within the F district shall be as set forth and so on, but... In attachment two. Yeah, but if, if it's an overlay and could be anywhere in, That's any, right. in any district, then what, does this, what is this telling us? You tell me. <laughs> that was a rhetorical. Because, like I say, it, <laughs> you go through permitted things. You know, animal husbandry is permitted. Obviously, you've got just because it's going to be subject to flooding doesn't mean you can't have a pasture there. Mm -hmm. You know, and and it wouldn't be appropriate to say you you need some places you might need you might have a ten acre pasture, you might have a five acre pasture, you might have what you know, if it if it's to apply to that area that shows on a map AR3 AR5 that kind of clarifies it a little bit you know, mm -hmm. but I think it needs to be spelled out somehow so that people like me that are a little slow might be able to understand it. I'm not sure we could ever clarify it that much, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> so any suggestions of a change? Well, minimum lot area for any proposed lot within the underlying district shall be a support and attachment to? Is that what it meant to say? It's actually misleading to refer to it as a district. So yeah, you're saying it's actually an like an overlay, really flood plain overlay, yeah, but it's not a, yeah, it's, a district. It's listed as a district here. Yeah, I know, but it's not real. There, there are no district right areas for mm -hmm. flood plains. Yeah, it's a flood plain overlay. It's an overlay. So, so take out F district and put flood plain overlay. Yeah regulations that then w the words got to be cleaned up all the way through but that's essentially what we're doing what else needs to be cleaned up well you need to change district to overlay throughout well, I just said yeah. oh, oh, so throughout the when, whole so then when we get to general uh, D2 it, it really doesn't apply unless you wrote the minimum lot area for any proposed lot with within the underlay, you know, the underlying district or something. Uh, so instead of district, yeah. we'll just put... Yeah. Well, you could put... With the ridge line, we say overlay district. You could just call it an overlay district if that's what it is. So it matches what we do with the ridge line. So the F overlay district? Something like that, okay. yeah. Yeah, you, you got a point there because everything's a zoning districts and all the other ones are apparently yeah. districts. Yeah. But that is not a district. No. It's, it's a... Yeah, you can it's just kind of like the aquifer overlay. overlay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Zoning district or something. Underlying zoning Redrying district, I think, is what that fixes stuff. that. Yeah, I guess. I guess that would work, sure. So what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep track. We got it all figured out. Ch change district to overlay. Or overlay district. Yeah, add overlay before right. between and F and district, right. wherever it appears. Right, okay. and Michael suggested. For D2. Just Russell, just, yeah, something about subject to the minimum lot area requirements of the underlying, know, zoning, underlying district. zoning district or something yeah, like that, that. that would work. Would that work? I mean, Sounds like it. Yeah. Good words. Something well, thank like you. that. And you already <laughs> again. took care of the other question um, I had. Because well, I was saying it should make reference to the underlying zoning district. So I said you already took care of the other one I had. You um, long, so long the previous ones and deleted that last like line D2. in seven. Yeah. For any proposed lot within the underlying district, zoning district shall be set forth as da 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 da. da. It's amazing. Sometimes we can agree. <laughs> this is two meetings in a row we've agreed, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. Any other changes, corrections, fixes? Okay. Go to uh, old D number four. D. Yeah. Yep, Russell. 
muscles back. <laughs> Why don't you just stay there? Why go back and forth all the time? Give him a permanent seat. I think there's one up here. <laughs> Only one thing in carrying along with what you've been doing in previous ones, deleting that one sentence. Yeah. Under C4. four. Yeah, that's that one. Yeah. Is that all you had? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're short. Well, I spent most of the day on so I got a little tired and probably <laughs> Russ? I mean, uh, Ray? Yeah. Um, we have the map problem, so I'm not going to get too much on that. Um, in the B, on the first page of that, big B that is, about two-thirds of the way down, it says recharge area, aquifer recharge area. Mm -hmm. uh, does that include all the area that's run off from hills and other areas included in the recharge area? It's, it was shown on that map that uh, okay. Elliot brought in, I think. It didn't have like a recharge area. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's defined there, okay. And then we got down into uh, further, the next line down, boundaries of the district shall be made on the official zoning map. And that's the question we had, which is the official zoning map. On the next page, <clears throat> uh, very top, snow disposal. The stockpiling or dumping of snow which has been transported to property within the APO, meaning Aquifer Protection District, is prohibited. Uh, does that mean a person can't stockpile snow when he cleans out the driveway if he happens to be in an aquifer district and put it at the back of his property so that he can get in and out of his driveway? If a farmer needs to get out so his cows can go and... Well, it says has been transported. Yeah. Well, it's transported. You if you just it plow up, it, I don't think it's transported. You pick it up with a bucket of a truck. A no. truck of your excavator and, yeah, but transport and it. carry it down that's being transported. It means transported to the property, though. So it, that indicates from another location. Not on the property. Not from another from property. property. Well, right. So like if you were a snow collector and, and okay. you, well, then say, you collected snow from one place, okay. you couldn't go down and dump it into the stream. Well, then let's reword it so it's clearing. Stockpile or dumping of snow which has been transported from other properties to this property within the district. We, we could just put to no subject property or, uh, you know, we're just trying to. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that. But I, I just, the property was standing by itself. And that's why I was trying to get I mean, definition. I don't know if subject's the right word, but uh, I'm just trying to use a simple word to yeah. identify a different property. Yeah. What do you think? Elliot? Uh, yeah, it doesn't quite say it, I don't think. Um, what you're, what doesn't quite communicate what you're trying to say. I mean, for example, city of Poughkeepsie loads all the snow off the roads and dumps it in the Hudson River. Right. Transported from mm -hmm. two is what, yeah. Um, so that would then be sure that... We could put transported instead of two from another property well yeah that's closer. that's more of the yeah. more of the intent they think yeah that's yeah. more the intent yeah yeah see how that see how that would take care of the excavator or yeah. whatever the guy has to do to clean it up so he can She's do his farming her job or whatever <laughs> well no yeah. it could be a farm road yeah. that you got to go back to feed your cows yeah I, that was that one I'd, I'd just like to applaud this section. You know, there, 
uh, groundwater pollution problems are showing up all over the state. I do a lot of work in the Adirondacks. A recent study showed that more than half of individual home wells within any reasonable distance of a state highway had dangerously high levels of salt, right? And so, and once it gets in there, it's a very long time to fix it. So I think, you know, the stronger this section is, the better. These are very hard problems to solve if they, if they happen. If you get something in the groundwater, it's a very long time to, right. and we all depend on that. Yeah, I, I think we all can agree that we don't want to pollute the water that we drink, <laughs> uh, or any water in general. But I mean, uh, you know, if we can make some common sense protections. Um, I remember there was a, uh, an issue with the planning board where someone was stockpiling material, and they just didn't think about it. Um, but when it was brought to their attention that it was within that uh, critical area, um, the landowner had no problem in moving it. And I think that's really the, the bottom line is most people are reasonable. They just don't understand or, or know. Um, so a lot of times we don't need laws. We just need to inform our neighbors of good practices. The next one is under toxic. This is interesting. Um, I have not read the U.S. Environmental Protection or New York State DEC environmental one. But dealing from the fire department standpoint in all the classes I've been in and stuff, uh, it's the product may be, but the volume may not be there. In other words, gasoline, if you have a five-gallon can, you can have a five-gallon can. But if you're going to have a 5,000 or a 500, you need a permit. And this sort of says, and, and that's just picking one thing. It could be road salt. Salt is bad mm -hmm. in big qualities. But in small stuff, you put on the, your eggs for breakfast. So, you know, um, it says, shall not shall be stored, kept, and maintained except under a permit issued by those agencies. You don't always get a permit for storing those things because they're small. Well, then they would, they would be exempt. Well, I don't, I don't well, know what these limits are here yeah, that you, you have. Determine, how do you determine the limits? No, it's determined I'm, I'm, in some of these I'm rules. taking a wild guess. I don't know this for a fact, but I would imagine the EPA and the <clears throat> Department of Environmental Conservation would define those things as quantities over a certain amount. You I, know, I, would assume, I, I would assume, but I'm just think so. saying we've got to be careful. You know, again, this is dealing with the aquifer protection overlay, which is a good percentage of the town. I mean, yeah, I know I, I, it's, 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 not it's, it's at least a third of the town. Yeah, yeah, it's um, not small, so. so it does affect a lot of places. Um, but the stockpiling and storing of, of certain things probably shouldn't be done in those areas. Well, you know, people have swimming pools and they have all kinds of chemicals that they make it to keep the water clear. I don't know what they are. I don't have a swimming pool. But I'm sure some of those things, like sodium hypochlorite or something like that, which is Clorox kind of thing, would be used and, you know, they may have to have it. And I know places where they actually do have uh, hazardous signs as saying what the type of chemical is that they store. So I, I, I'm just saying it's <clears throat> permits are, are not always there when you do these things. That's Except for under permit by those agencies if required. How about that? Yeah. Fine. Oops. Russ, did you have something? Well, I'm going for Ray if he's got more. Yeah, well, the other one is down under nine, petroleum storage. It says installation of underground storage tanks and vaults for the storage of gasoline, heating oil, diesel oil, kerosene, and other motor oil is prohibited once removed and under any underground storage tank shall not be reinstalled underground and any replacement tank shall be not be installed underground uh, I'm just if I say it's prohibited in the first sentence because that ends it that says if you have an underground tank today with any of these things 
home or farm, doesn't matter, or, or agway or whatever, it's prohibited. So in other words, the guy's got to rip them out of the ground. No, it says the installation is prohibited. N new installation, I think, is the word that's missing. Well, if you already have one, you wouldn't be installing one. That would be in prohibited. And you could put new, the new installation. I mean, it doesn't that, change anything. Yeah, because yeah. that then says, you know, it's essentially grandfathered if you have them or not. Okay. Yeah. What's the issue there? I'm sorry. I don't know. Well, if you didn't think installation new. was sufficient, so we put new. New. In other words, okay. it, it, it essentially is implying grandfathering. Okay. That's all. all right. That's all I was looking for. That's okay. all I had there. Got it. Anything on else? that same paragraph, I, I would not put a fuel oil tank underground. I used to deliver fuel oil. I used to deliver gasoline to farmers. I worked for Love Oil. He asked me, I've done a lot of things. <laughs> and cleaned out septic tanks, helped dig them up, helped pump them. But anyway, on heating oil, I think I went on a DEC website, and I think they are allowed. Now, we got in pretty high-tech gas tanks before I stopped doing it, and we were putting in fiberglass gas tanks. They had to be surrounded by so many inches of either pea stone or sand to prevent a rock from putting a hole in it. Now they have these tanks which are dual linings. Line, you have yeah. a tank within a tank, and yeah. they have to stick the outside to see if there's product in it. Yeah. I think DEC allows it. I would not do it myself, but I don't think that you're within your rights to prohibit it if they meet DEC standards to put a tank underground for fuel oil, you know, so I, I think that's, you know, I most, that's most insurance companies have, uh, they, they've backed away recently, but in general, most insurance companies would never insure. Uh, there's new language that in New York you can do it, in New Jersey you still can't, so we can't write insurance if, if you have an underground tank in New Jersey on a regular home. In New York, we just exclude any environmental, you know, um, um, cost of the cleanup because it could. Yeah, be well, if you get a leak, 30, that's they got to burn the soil dollars. they bring out. It, it's it's got to ship it's it's astronomical. It, but, but it's not even just the soil. We're talking about the aquifer district, so yeah. now it's into the water stream. You can't clean that. Uh, I used to have a, a, an office over on 55 where the mobile station contaminated the the, the aquifer basically, and and they had to put a. Um, one micron filter, charcoal, ultraviolet light, and everything else, and they came in every month and changed all the tanks. And, and well, as you're probably aware, the old Masonic site, yeah. that well is contaminated. The house across the street is contaminated. I believe the store is contaminated. Uh, the store went back to when they had a kerosene tank that leaked. I can remember that. Every time you got a glass of water, you could smell the kerosene. Mm -hmm. But then they got those houses down there. Have, luckily, they tested mine, and I was all right, but it had MTBE in it. And he said it was from using the same truck to deliver gasoline to one place and then putting fuel oil in it to another place. And the Masons had an under, underground fuel tank for all the time they had the fuel. So that contaminated. Well, I'm, I'm just saying that they do have new tanks that mm -hmm. the DEC oh, yeah. does allow. And I, I don't know if it's, I guess I'm beating a dead horse. I wouldn't do it. But I mean, I one of the things that, that we talked about might be excessive was, was propane, like, you know, because propane does not contaminate it just evaporates so you know we we intentionally left out propane um when we we <coughs> talked about it so well, most people, that are, big point. Most people that are burying tanks nowadays are, are usually the propane yeah and you got to fill them or they crawl out yeah if you don't load out you don't <laughs> keep it weighted it'll yeah, pop it up out of the ground out. yeah the dec the last ruling i heard was anything over 550 gallons, some number are 575, it's in that range. You cannot bury except with special permits from DEC, like at gas stations where you put a 1,000 or 5,000 gasoline tank in the ground or they have uh, kerosene, something like that. So that was the threshold that was established because I had to know that when we were here in the 90s had to rip out all our tanks which were buried for, for years and no leaks or anything but we had to do it so we well, we're not obligated to do that just because dec says it's okay are we no i'm just saying the dec right. says no i mean but no this is what to allow it i'm is actually referring back to what russell said mm -hmm. yeah 
Do we have to allow it just because the EC no, says I don't you think can do so. it? I don't, I don't think so. I'm just telling you Would what the be? threshold was. Yeah. All right, just a point. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. We, have any, we have a lawyer in the audience. Are we ready to quit this? That's not his specialty. That's not his specialty. <laughs> you know, the well, wonders if, of... If DEC says you're allowed to do this, does, can we still disallow it? <laughs> it's not your specialty. <laughs> okay. I have no opinion. No opinion. All right. Yeah. DEC yeah. does have a table on the, uh, the New York Code of hazardous substances, and then they list uh, the reportable quantities. So if a release occurs right. for this eight, uh, anything on this 80-page list of more than a, the amount listed in this column, then you're required by law to yes. report it to DEC. Yeah. It's not entirely clear to me that they say what how much you could store on your property if it's not released and not have it be treated as hazardous. So um, yeah. I, I think it's an interesting question to think about somebody's gas can for their lawnmower. Does it contravene literally the, the, that language there? I don't I think somebody, I guess my question was, has there, other towns are clearly dealing with this. Did um, have, have people come up with a clever way to phrase this that isn't um, you know, completely onerous, um, but that regulates potentially dangerous quantities? Yeah. From the fire department standpoint, it's the spillage kind of thing that we get responsible for, and we have charts and stuff for that. But storage, we don't. The only thing is, if you have a certain amount, and there's there's numbers for that that you're transporting on a say a tractor and trailer truck or something, then you got to put a placard on the outside if you exceed this amount, and some of those are pretty high. So I mean, what we did uh, was just at the end, if required. So if the DEC is not requiring it, so we we tagged on the on the end of number five of toxic storage. Yeah. If required, yeah, I, I think that's reasonable. Well, but hang on a second. Hang on a second. DEC and EPA are only referenced, as I read this thing, in terms of definitions, not in terms of permitting. That's the town. That's a town issue. Mm. So my question then becomes. How do we know? You follow? Well, that's like any time you're, you're, you're dealing in the water, you have to get a DEC permit. I mean, and for instance, there was that one issue where somebody was doing uh, some excavation over on uh, um, Hollow Road, and they didn't even come to inform us because they went and they got the permit from the DEC directly. Okay, let me try that. That's still, the, okay. I'm going to read this without the reference to the EPA and DEC. It says, no toxic, hazardous, or radioact radioactive substance shall be stored, kept, or maintained except under a permit issued by those agencies. I don't... If required. It, it doesn't follow. If I'm keeping gasoline stored on my property, how the hell is the EPA going to know? They won't. Exactly. So what's the point? Well, it's kind of like all zoning laws. You're, you're really not in violation until someone catches you. Fooling rats on you. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to fix that. <clears throat> it doesn't. It's the, Okay, anyway. Well, you got to fix? You got to change? I don't know. I mean, it, it just doesn't seem to, to me, it doesn't seem to follow. Because, I mean, it's one thing to call your local zoning officer and say, this guy's building a garage too close to the property line. It's another thing to call DEC and say, my, num my neighbor is stockpiling gasoline in the backyard. Hmm. Which is a lot less obvious. I mean, you can see a garage going up too close yeah. to the property line. That's, see that driving by. But how are you going to know that somebody is stockpiling gasoline? Delivery truck. <clears throat> your neighbor complains. Exactly. That's usually how yeah, but anybody how's your knows. your neighbor going to know? 
Well, if they don't know, then there's no foul, I guess. <laughs> Except it's everybody's water, <laughs> but yeah, oh, you, you're not going to know. I mean, it's yeah, I how you how do you enforce a law if nobody knows? That. You can't fix that. Yeah. the The intent is there. That's all. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you got to change, we can change well, it yeah, next I'll, time. I'll think about. It. Okay. Anything else, Ray? Anybody? <clears throat> Abandoned wells. No. You all good? I'm not worried about the wells. The salt and coal, uh, I don't know that we, coal is sort of not worried about, not many people use coal anyways. Yeah. No, I'm saying I don't care about that one. Salt, I'm concerned with. Uh, salt. We try here at the town hall to put all the salt in the salt shed. Mm -hmm. There are occasions in the past where it didn't fit all in there all right. and we tarped it this would preclude us from having that extra salt i'm just using that as a a, an, a real example marion thompson hollow road good evening mm -hmm. um i i just wanted to comment about the the underground gasoline the underground oil and actually we had a thousand gallon oil tank which we which we dealt with emptied it out, filled it in, and according to the law. And it was, it was something we were worried about because it was metal and, and it was getting old. So it is an issue, and I'm, I was just talking to Cynthia about the idea that um, any company that is hired to put in some giant tank for gas, propane, whatever, is, aren't they under restrictions as to local laws and ordinances as to what can be put in the ground and what can go into those tanks? They're allowed. DEC allows it. They yeah. can do anything? As long as they get a DEC permit. As long as they get it. So they have to get a DEC permit. Right. Yeah. So we, do we need to have language? I mean, if we changed our... Even the abatement of the tank, taking the tank out of the ground, has to have a DEC permit, and it has to be filed with the town that it's been abandoned. So. Right, right, yeah. I, don't, I remember doing something like that with ours, yeah. but... Um, so I'm wondering, do we need the language in there to say that um, either, to, either to, if we change the language to be more restrictive, do we then have to notify all of these companies that our language has changed and that they should be, that they will now be subject to our new ordinance in regard to underground storage? I'm asking a question. <laughs> if they get a building permit, they would have to come to the town and they would be informed of whatever the changes. So we're, I mean, so we're are we protected? Is, is, our, is our water protected by what we have now? We have nothing now, yeah, so this is all this brand new. All, this is all red, so it's all new. Okay, okay. Well, since we do have very shallow groundwater and we don't have a lot of huge aquifers, it sounds like it should be in the language to... Well, that's, to why, that's why it's all yeah, here. That's why it's there. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. You answered my question? <coughs> um, Sorry. Oh. I'm going to ask you on, on this, but would it make sense to ask the town attorney to look in? I've been trying to read DEC law on my phone, which is a really stupid thing to do. But it goes back and forth. I mean, one way I read this is that any underground tank is regulated by DEC of any size. If it contains a hazardous substance, anything on that 80-page list, um, which presumably then requires permits. And, of course, that there must have been an exemption somewhere in here for everybody's home, buried home oil tank. Mm -hmm. you know. But nonetheless, would it make sense for the town attorney to just try to tell us how DEC law would apply within this, and would it be reasonable? Well, I mean, all these these changes, once we've got a final draft, they're going to be sent to the attorney, and they're going to review and, and check it. And then we'll have one final public hearing again. Or seven. Yeah, or seven, right. Have the real <laughs> public hearing. Or, or seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So what do you want to do about the salt? Oh, so... Oh. Uh, I raised the question about yeah, the salt. Yeah. Uh, unless proper pre precautions or protections or I mean, hey you want to you want to put something in there See, it says it's got to be an enclosed building or structure and it does occasionally happen where they tarp it just to 
keep it because if you don't tarp it, you come up with a big salt block. You can't do anything. Right. Or other. Are you making an exception for the town? No, no. That is I separate just, from everybody else. We didn't go to town in there. We just if, said. If you make an exception for the town, no. it's going to apply to everybody else. And somebody who just throws an old rip tarp over, oh, that's it. Yeah. you know, yeah. you're asking. Yeah. I think the town needs to lead the way and enlarge its shed. You know, that's what it really should do. Yeah. I mean, it should set the example of what's right. Or the right. salt that fits the shed. And, yeah. Yeah. When you we need try to. We buy in bulk because of yeah. price. I, I know. Mean, they come in with these Sometimes we take delivery in stages. Trailer, so. And then sometimes we have to pay for this not taking it all at once. Yeah. I think Richard has a good point, though. Not that it's um, something you want to do, but somewhere as I was reading today, and it said that the town was exempt from having to comply with the zoning laws themselves. You have the zoning law for the people in the town, but the town is not held to the same compliance of those zoning laws. But we are complied to Yeah, you DC want to because it does it kind of puts a bad taste in somebody saying, oh, yeah, why the hell absolutely. it bothers me when I see the cop going down the road and talking on a cell phone, but they're allowed to, Right. you know? Assumingly, we, we think that they're not calling their wife and they actually are doing something on a call. And I know I always was, but no, we didn't have cell phones. But the town's still there. subject to the DEC laws, so but if the DEC says we can't stockpile something out and... You know, and, and the off occasion, you've got a bad storm predicted and you have a tractor trailer come in and a couple of tons isn't going to fit out, I think you have to use the common sense thing and say, well, we're attempting to prevent this and we're going to use it pretty fastly, so we're going to put a cover over and prevent the rain if it comes from leaching it out and... You know, you have to you have to give and take a little bit on these things, and I think that in a situation like that, you have to give some leeway and say, well, you know, here's a special circumstance. We're going to tarp it, and it's going to be used up pretty rapidly, and then it'll all be in the building. Short-term storage or yeah. something. So, I mean, it could say com complete building structure or other adequate protection. I mean, I don't know what that would be. What does that mean? <laughs> I mean, not all. Highway garages had salt sheds at one point well, no, in time. No, we didn't have one until I built it. It's like about 15 years ago. But so up until then, it was outside with tarps. So how do you want to fix it? I don't want to fix it at all. I don't think we should do anything that would allow salt to get more easily into the water. I, it's a giant problem, and we shouldn't allow it. Yeah, it's it's a hard one to to deal with. It's not <clears> easy. I mean, we haven't had that in a while that I remember, so it hasn't been a problem. Because, like I said, we've either delayed delivery or we tried to. Yeah, yeah. it's not intended, but it does happen. Oh, of course, it over, over. I mean, we could technically flows. store it in the trucks and put the trucks in the garage. I mean, <laughs> if it was that much of an overspill. Yeah. Well. I just brought it up. All right, so are we okay with it? it? Yeah, I'll right. leave it. I'm just saying that's what happens. Yeah, I get it. Thank you. Definitions? No, we skipped no, them. They come, they come later. So we would come to 250.29. It's 19? a couple of minutes no. before 9. How about 19? That's what I meant. Yeah. 250. Oh, oh okay. 19? Yeah, 19 is a nice one. 19, before we get to 29. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, 19 is where I got the paper clip. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty short. Let me find it because I didn't pull it because it didn't. Uh... So the question was, is there going to be a lot of markups and do we want to delay it or? I don't have too much. I really only have three comments. <clears throat> I think 29.1 is going to take a while next time, so why don't we try and do 19 and then be done? Yeah. Well, we, we just got to find 19. Too, yeah. Before <laughs> we get to 29.1. I have one question on 19. I don't know about anybody Ooh, else. Surprise. Huh? Okay. <laughs> but Russell has questions. Oh, go ahead. Well, my question. Yeah. Is, is actually a. Is, a cap section A. Yeah. We added a sentence there. In the middle. Yeah. 
and intended solely for residential use. That, that phrase is ambiguous to me because these, it's not clear to me whether these lots we're talking about are intended solely for residential use. Um, what this, sec this sentence implies that there are other uses. If they're not supposed to be other uses and they're only residential, then I think it's better to take those, to remove those four words and simply say, each new lot shall be a buildable lot. Looks like it said that at one point because of the different colors. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I don't know, I don't remember why we decided to add those four words. Obviously, we did after the fact. Yes, because it is different colors. It was done at a different time. But maybe Dean can remember why we added those four words. And I mean, if you skip down to the end of B, you'll see that same sentence. Obviously, we, we cut it and moved it up. Mm. But those four words We're solely not are not there. Exactly. It simply says, each new lot shall be a buildable lot as defined in this chapter. So I don't remember why we added those four words and what they're supposed to, confuse they're you. Supposed to accomplish. Yeah. It was put in there to confuse you. Yeah. True. Strike it. Successful. I, so. I mean, I think we could just remove those four words and yeah. it's perfectly fine without them. All right, so which one, what are we removing? The red the Red. 19A. Uh, in the middle, the six, red. Six lines down. There are four words in red. Intended, intended solely. solely for residential Sorry, use. Yeah. Just take those out. Okay. Unless I'm misreading this thing. That's the only question I had. Get a, line. A, a question on that, if I may. That's just the one second. Sure. Go ahead. Aren't, aren't there some situations in the town? I know over on the lake, uh, uh, there's a guy who has a lot where he just keeps his boat, or he lets his boat have access. Uh -huh. And he was sold that lot. Uh -huh. It's not buildable, uh -huh. but it's a legal lot. Um, and are we making those a situation like that illegal? Well, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. yeah, each new lot shall be a buildable lot. So but yes. Is that really what you mean? Each new. Each new lot. So if you're going to make well, a new no, lot. This, but a right, new lot. but it's if somebody lot. wanted to sell a small piece of land, say over on the lake, so a guy could have access with his boat, they won't then that, would be, that becomes illegal under this zoning. Yes. And is that what you mean to do? Subdivision laws will not allow you to make a non-conforming lot. Right. Yeah, that's already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It could still be one acre. Well, it's three acre now. It used to be one. Three. So I assume you people want to go to 2029 20, next yeah. and, and adjourn for tonight. But just one short thing before that, and it hasn't been changed, but 25028. We're not. We're uh, just doing 25019 now. No, we're we're 19. Now. Okay. That's I thought it. you just completed that. No, no, we're not done there. Okay, uh, the bottom of the page where it says all septic system installations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, must conform with the requirements of the Dutchess County Department of Health. Uh, I know what the numbers are and all, but uh, I was going to add something. Be concerned about the well septic system distance separation requirements or something I was going to add. Yeah, Just but that's a DEC requirement. It's not a town no. requirement. So why would we put okay. language well, in there? Okay. That, so let, let the DEC handle that one. That's the not engineer. DEC. It's the health department. Oh, that's what I meant. The, yeah. the health department. Let them okay. handle it. On the next page, item five, it says pumping of cesspools and ses septic tank systems. Well, the tank was crossed oh, out. System. It says system. Yeah, shall be permitted, however, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, what about holding tanks, which are not septic tanks? They're holding tanks. They do exist in town. I would add them as being as one of the things. Cesspools. Well, it says septic systems. So cesspools and septic systems, a tank may be considered a system. 
But if you want to add the word in. Yeah, it, holding tank is, is like a cistern. It's a completely closed place where the water goes in. It's so, sort of like a humongous porta potty. That's not part of a, that would not be part of a septic system? No. Uh, then add it in. Yeah, Fine. I just want to add it in because they do exist in town. Okay, all right. What are they called, just holding, holding tanks? Holding tanks, yeah. Or you call them septic holding tanks. Russ, right. you had something else? Yeah, I just... We're going to end at 19 it's, it's 9 o'clock, but... Well, you ended at 19, you were going to go to 29 no. next. And no. There was not. something that hasn't been changed. I just wanted to ask you a question about it. We're not going to go to 29 tonight. Okay. So then 250, 28, I'll bring up next time. Okay. Yeah, it's 29-1 or 29? Both. 29, 29 and 29-1 okay. next just, time. <laughs> find it. I just want to tell you folks what a pleasure it's been here to be tonight. <laughs> You're going to have to bring popcorn. Yeah, I could bring popcorn. You can get them a popcorn How machine in the corner, How play a movie in intermission. How many sections are we doing next time? Make sure well, 29, 29.1. Um, <laughs> um, what comes up after that? 30, 33A. What are we doing? 29. I just want to make sure everybody in the audience knows what we're doing. 20, okay, Maybe so 337. 29, 29.1, 33, 33A, which is 33.1 yeah. you want to do? Is that what you said? I think that's about yeah, it. Yeah, the, the four is a reach. So yeah. that would be more than enough. I'll yeah. send the list to Carol and she can post it. Okay, right. 29, 29.1. And actually 33, 33 doesn't even have anything. Well, 33 doesn't have anything. Yeah, it. so it's just 33, one. All right, make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we just want to? Night. Thank Sorry. you. Turn the mic. You just want to give her three or?